Okay, for today's project, I have something really, really fun in mind. Um, have you ever had a t-shirt like this? Look at these beautiful images on this t-shirt that either you don't like, it's too warm, it's too old, it's got holes, or um, it's just um, something that it's not your style anymore or whatever and you are thinking about donating it to your local thrift shop um, here is an awesome idea I've always loved using material in my art journals and altered book backgrounds and covers of journals that I make so I got the idea okay why not upcycle a t-shirt and t-shirt art so this go find a t-shirt and you could you could maybe even look in, in your uh, local thrift shops a lot of the thrift shops have dollar day scan through the dollar t-shirts and see what you can find see if you can find some really cool image that you could use you're only spending a buck and you're going to get a nice fun material focal point for an art journal page. So let's get started and I'll show you my idea. Okay, for this project, I'm gonna work in my large size Ranger Dilutions journal. This is my Ranger journal and the pages are nice and big, they lay flat and they're for mixed media. So this is a perfect canvas for where to start this page. So I'm gonna just flip to a place where I wanna do this. And then I want to see if the image I want to use will fit. I want to use this great big cool dragonfly and I want to see if it fits across and it does. So it'll only lose a little tiny bit so I can even go off center. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take some nice sharp scissors and I'm going to trim out this dragonfly image that I'm going to use. So I'm, yes, cutting apart this t-shirt, but I'm going to use a lot of different elements of it, so it is being upcycled into, into artwork. So I'm going to cut around this fussy cut like you would a piece of paper or something out of a book or a magazine, but this is material. It's t-shirt cotton material. So I'm going to do that, and I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so here is my image cut out. It's t-shirt, and I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, but look at how awesome and fabulous this is as a focal. Look at this. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I cannot even believe. And if you've never tried using material on a page, when you put it down with a matte medium or a Mod Podge and it dries, the texture of it is just, it's so cool to feel it. And then you can add things over the top, which I'm going to do on this. And I'm going to put some textures in the background. So this is what I'm starting with as my focal design. And I could do my whole background any blue like sky. I could do clouds, make it, you know, realism where it's like the dragonfly is flying. But for an artable page, since I'm going to put some words on the page, I want it to be crazy and wild and arty. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is this is an interesting trick. When you look at this image, what is the very first color? that pops out to you. For some people that may be green, for some people that may be this patch of blue right here, for some it may be this yellow. Looking at it on camera, it's a little bit different than looking at it in person. So when I look at it in person, I actually see these yellow, this yellow color and some of the blue. So I think that's what I'm going to use for my background are the yellows and blues. So here are the colors I've chosen, a yellow, a turquoise and a little bit of bright green just for good measure. All these colors are the three colors that I see most that pop within this dragonfly. So I'm going to remove this from the page and I'm going to start doing background. Now for my background, um, I, this is going to be just a first initial layer so it's going to be very free and simple. Okay and I'm going old school. I'm going finger painting with this. No brush. I'm going to just put down some color all over my page and I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to start spreading this around 
just with my fingers onto the back of my page. Why I'm doing this instead of a paintbrush? Well, with a paintbrush, you're going to see brush strokes. With your fingers, you're spreading that paint out and you get a very thin and very smooth layer of paint and it's it's just very thin. And who cares if we get messy, right? This is art. It's fun. When we were kids, we loved to finger paint because we got messy and we got to play in the paints and spread it all around. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm going old school. So I'm just spreading around that basic color and I do like to put something behind my pages so that I don't get paint on the page that's under it. And I can get right out to that edge without causing a problem. I mean, even just that, look at so far. Yep, wild, crazy, but fun. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of teal, but I don't want teal to be my main color. I want it just to be a very small part of it. So I'm putting a little teal and I'm going to put a little bit of varnish in there as well. Why? Because varnish is going to take that opaque, opaque paint thin it down and it's going to make it a little more transparent. So I want I want transparent. And I love that look of finger painting when when you see it on the page and you do it. And you're spreading it out with your hand. I love it. It's very soft. It's very It's just doing exactly what I want it to. Just putting a little bit of color down and spreading it around. And it's starting to take shape. And these colors complement each other, so I don't care if they're wet, they're dry, if they bleed into each other, doesn't matter. Why do you try doing the finger painting and just rubbing it into your page? and spreading it around. You will enjoy it. It's so freeing and so fun and it just does so much different than a brayer or a paintbrush or a sponge. Get in there and use your fingers. It's a little more green than I had anticipated, so I'm probably going to add a little more yellow back in. But this is just the first layer, and we're going to add lots of other things, so it doesn't really matter. I just want to get some color down on my page, cover up that white page, break the page, get in there. And fill it up with something. Okay. And I actually quite like this. Okay, so that's a good start. Now I'm gonna let that dry a minute or two. And a tip about cleaning your hands, if you just take some um, regular hand lotion and rub it into your hands and let it sit in there and soak into your skin for about 10 minutes before you do any finger painting, when you go to wash that paint off, it just comes right off, slick as can be. Okay, so now I've got my my page and it's dry and a lot of times I'm sure you've seen me do it a million times you've probably seen a million other people do it the next step that most people do is to continue to layer right here with your stencils and your texture paste and all the stuff that you're going to add my process is slightly different because well I have a lot of different theories on why it's different but I could go ahead and I could create an entire completed background with all kinds of color and bases and texture and, and interest and then put my focal down. But I'm not going to do that. I'm building my page up in a different manner. So I put this base layer down just to initially cover up the white page. And now because I'm using a big large focal, I'm going to put this down next. 
So I'm going to find where I want to lay this out and put it on my page. Look how cool that is. Oh, I just love this so much. And who would have thunk it that this is an upcycled t-shirt? Who would have thunk it? Okay, so there's my image. And that's how it's going to be on my page. Oh, look how cool it already looks. All right, and one thing that I do like to do, because this is going to be... Um, it's, it's solid in its material and it's right on the gutter of your book. When you finish this and you go to fold it and close the book, it's going to be really, it's going to want to open to that page because there's going to be a lot right in that gutter. Because this is a material, I am going to go ahead and split this. Make sure I put this right where I want it. And I'm going to follow that line and that gutter. And I'm going to cut this image just straight down that gutter and I can feel it under my scissors the tip of the scissors lays right in the gutter so it guides me along and I just cut my focal okay don't worry about it don't get in a panic or freak out about that I'm gonna just pull it slightly apart and I'm gonna put it down and then now you have that gutter freed up for closing up your book. Now we can still go back in here and we can still touch that up so you won't see that crease with paints and things that are thin, but now the material is not gonna impede closing my book. So that's just my choice, you don't have to do that. Or you could put your images everywhere and leave that center apart. But I wanted to use this great big t-shirt image and maybe you do too, so. Now what I'm gonna do is put this down with um, Mod Podge. You can use matte medium, um, you can even glue it down initially if you prefer and then do some stuff over the top of it, but for me I like the Mod Podge. Um, matte medium is not quite as sticky and so for material I find that Mod Podge works a little bit better. I'm going to use matte medium elsewhere on the page, but initially for sticking down my material I'm using Mod Podge. So I'm just putting a nice layer of Mod Podge. I'm going to leave this side where it goes so that I can match them up one side at a time. And I'm going to stick my image down. So I'm going to just come in here and lay it down the gutter as close as I can get, but leaving a little space. I want a little space because I want it to, my book to close really well. I want to make sure that it lays flat, so I'm working it across. And you want to try not to stretch it out stretch out that material too far because if you stretch that because it's cotton t-shirt material you're gonna end up with your image being a little wonky okay so now I've got it into place I'm gonna put some more Mod Podge over the top and yep that t-shirt is gonna soak some of it up but that's okay you just want to get it down really good And you can let it dry and you can even put a second coat if you want to. And it's okay if it gets creases and wrinkles in it. If you like that look with material, which I love, that's okay. If there isn't enough underneath, lift it up, put some under, smooth it down. It goes on really easily. You'd think a t-shirt wouldn't, but it does. And what a gorgeous focal this is. This is just so cool. I love dragonflies. It's, it's my main theme. It's a dragonfly mandala that I've drawn in the past, and I just love dragonflies. So I saw this and said, this has got to be on my page. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to take this and remove it. Put the Mod Podge down. And do the same thing over here and I'll come back and show you. 
Okay, so it says dry, and oh, it is so absolutely gorgeous, and you would never know that that was from a t-shirt. It's become part of the page now, and it's got this wonderful feeling and texture to it. Look at how that looks. So fun, and so pretty on this page. So, okay, so now I want to start adding some texture, and there's a lot of different things that you can add to your pages to make texture. Uh, this is cheesecloth that has been tea stained. I've got some cheesecloth that's just white. I've got a dryer sheet that went through the dryer. That's really fun to add. So I just want some interest and some texture on my background. So I'm going to just start uh, cutting and tearing some pieces of these items and start putting them down with some matte medium. And you may wonder why I've switched from Mod Podge to matte medium. It's really a preference. Um, either works just fine. I like some things for some techniques and some things for others and how you decide what you're going to use for what. Um, it basically comes down to playing around with them and trying them out. Matte medium, it works in the same way as Mod Podge, but it's not as sticky. Um, so I like that when you put it down, it's not so wet and it's not so sticky, but you still get the same um, tackiness, you know, as far as tacking it down, something down to the page, like something textured like this. So just try them both and see what you prefer. You may enjoy just using Mod Podge. You may like just using matte medium for everything. It is just trial and error. So I am sticking on some pieces of dryer sheet, which I know sounds kind of strange, but it, when you tear it and you shred it like this after it's come out of the dryer, look at this great stuff. It makes this wonderful texture on your page. So I shred little pieces like this and the more shreddy the better and just find a spot to put it in, put it down and I don't do any specific thought. I don't care if it wads up or bunches up or folds over it doesn't matter because the more texture the better so i'm just adding this in some places because we're going to go over it with some more paints and some sprays and the texture just makes that final result look wonderful. You can do this, all these techniques in a, an altered book as well. I'm just doing it today in an art journal. So give it a try in your altered book on an altered book page. So now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to use cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is got, has got more texture than a dryer sheet. It is thicker. The threads to it are a thicker thread, thicker fiber. I love those little strings. I'm going to leave them on and just glue them down where they land. I love that. Okay. I'm going to put some up here at the top. And you just want to really play around and see if I had, I could put my, like I said, a stencil down and add some more layers of paint underneath this dragonfly and then build over the top. And if that's what you like to do, go for it. Um, I just kind of go about it in a backwards manner. I put the items on after that big focal and work around the focal so it's just preference there's no right or wrong and art is interpretive so you know if you like to do something a certain way or you watch someone and their way of doing things resonates with you then that's how you should do it if you try it a different way you might find a different way that you like better but there is no right or wrong. So just because you've seen it different, done differently with someone else doesn't mean this way is wrong or their way is wrong. 
There is no right or wrong. Oh, I love this. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to let that dry. Let me show you up close. We've just got some really nice stringy texture with that dryer sheet and with the spread out and shredded cheesecloth. And I've just put it in a few places on that background and we'll let it dry. Okay, so my texture deliciousness is dry. I call it deliciousness because it's just, oh, I love texture, I love material, I just love it. So I call it deliciousness. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to do is to take some stencils and add some texture paste. And I'm using golden crackle paste. And I'm even going right over the spots that had the um, the other texture on it. I'm going right over them. It doesn't even matter. And I'm just randomly putting some texture, avoiding my dragonfly. I'm coming in with a little bit bigger of a stencil and just going to put that in a couple places. I really like that. It's kind of like layered squares on top of squares just for some interest. And I'm not going to do that in too many places. Just a few. Oh, that is awesome. I love it. Love it. Art just makes me happy. This is my happy place. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, and while that is drying, because it's going to take a little while for that texture paste to dry, I'm going in with a Derwent graphic paint pen. This is water soluble paint. Once it dries, it's permanent and it's fine lines. So you can draw fine lines, you can spread it around. So what I'm doing is going to the edge here because I love this color and I want to bring out that butterfly, or I mean the dragonfly. So I'm going around the edge here with my paint pen and then I'm going to spread that out, pulling it out away from it just lightly with a brush just to kind of make that dragonfly be bordered and pop a little bit before I use my sprays. So see what that looks like and I'm trying not to lean in my in my texture paste because it is wet so I'm being very careful about that. So I'm just going to go around this whole edge and sketch in a line this is like a turquoise blue color. They're very fun. You can um, you can draw fine lines. You can spread this paint out. You can um, you can do doodling with them. They are great for doodling on your page. But then when you drag it out, look at this beautiful, vibrant, pretty color. And then what I like about their product is some of the water soluble, if you try to go over it with something else like a spray, it's going to move that product around. This, once it dries, it is permanent. So once you get it where you want it and it dries, it, you can't move it again. So once you put sprays or anything else over it, it's going to stay put. 
But I just thought this would be a pretty effect to kind of go around that dragonfly and add some teal. I like it. It's just going to make it stand out a little bit against that background that we did. So I'm going to go ahead and play with this a little bit and go around my dragonfly. For you to watch the whole thing would take a half hour or so. So you get the gist of what I'm doing. You see what it does. It's really pretty. Let me go in between here and show you a little bit right here. Again, just tracing around that material in a scribbly manner with my paint pen and then coming back in with a brush and just kind of pulling it down and spreading it out. This brush was damp but not wet. You don't want a really wet brush. And look at, you can even go up into that material and the material is going to pick up some of that color too which is really nice. So it doesn't matter if you go right over the edge of the material. Pretty. Look at that. It's just nice and bright and we're starting to put a nice shadow, a, a teal colored shadow behind that dragonfly to pop it off the page. And while those dry, I'd like to add some iridescent shine to some of this. Um, and some of it might get covered up by sprays, but I'm going to just play around while that is drying. And we can always go back and put in more if I like the effect. So what I'm going to use is varnish. And I'm going to put some varnish down on my little plate here. And I'm going to use some really pretty glitter. It's ultra fine and it is um, by Art Glitter. I think I've got a link. I can put a link below for that. And I'm going to mix glitter right into that varnish. So what effect it's going to be is going to be varnish that's going to dry clear but it's going to have a glitter to it. And I'm going to go in and on the body here I'm going to brush that over his little body in the middle. This is just playing just to see how it comes out. Just kind of had an idea and I'm running with it. So I'm putting some down on the body and you know when varnish dries it's just going to dry clear so Hopefully it's just going to add a little element of some glittery shine to it. Let me show you what that looks like. It's kind of, oh, it's beautiful actually. Look. Ooh, love it. That is very pretty. So when it dries clear that his whole body is going to still show through like it did with all the detail, but it'll have glitter, a very shimmery glittery effect. So I think what I'm going to do is add some of that to the wings as well and just brush it on in some of the lighter places where the patterns will still show through. Glittered varnish. Oh, it's pretty. And you know that's what mixed media is. It's just taking everything you've got and playing around with it. Sometimes use it for its intended person purpose. Sometimes you can use it for in a different way. So if you play around you might discover something that you never thought of that turns out to be really really cool. And I think this is going to be one of them. Oh, Look at those wings are just... You can still see the material and the pattern through but now they just have a little gossam gossamer glimmer look to them as well. And it's gonna it's gonna dry clear, so I even think I'm gonna put some up here on his head underneath his eyes. Oh, 
pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry too and stop playing around until this background stuff dries. And you know, I never waste product, so I'm done with my dragonfly, but I still have a little bit of that glittery varnish left on my page, so I'm just going back up here and just throwing it here and there on over this texture stuff where it's semi-dry. Adding some shimmer to the background as well. Never waste product. Use up everything. So either put it on another page or throw it in your background. Um, I, in another video, have shown that I keep a swatch book. And in here I have swatched out my... Um, dis and in here I have swatched out my um, Dilutions ink sprays. So I can see what they look like when they're dry. Because what they look like on the bottle and what they look like when you spray it and dry it may be two different things. So I'm choosing Dirty Martini... Um, Calypso Teal, or no, Vibrant Turquoise Dirty Martini, and some Lemon Zest. So those are the colors from my little swatch book here. And I've got my Delusion Sprays. So I have put something underneath to protect this. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of spraying. And you can let them run, you can let them, if they get too much, you can let them run. You can also add a touch of water very lightly if you want to mist and let them run and blend. They look really, really pretty with the um, textures that I've put down. You can also take a brush and lightly brush over them to spread them out a little bit if it's too much in one spot. I like that. I even like that drop up there. I'm going to leave it. I like the blob drop and it's going to spread out and do its thing. But I don't want to mix them. I want them to be kind of separate in their spots, so I'm being strategic where I put them. If you push down really slow, you get these nice drips, which I love. If you push all the way down, you get a good solid spray. And look at how that looks. Love it. Looks really pretty over that texture that we created with adding different things and using matte medium. Okay, let me try another color here. I'm going to do some green. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. Love that. So pretty. So much fun to play with this stuff. And I always put a put something underneath so I don't get my table or the pages underneath. And I'm going right over the dragonfly onto the material. It doesn't matter. The sprays are gonna just go right into the material. It just adds some color and interest. Pretty. I'm gonna do some green up here in this upper corner. And a little bit over here. And then the rest of it I want in yellow. Because some of my yellow in that background is getting hidden and I really like that yellow. So I'm going to bring that yellow back. Oh yeah. Pretty, 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 pretty. Bring back the yellow. You can let it run. You can let it bleed into each other.
They're very vibrant. I'm a little right there. Ooh, I think I even like that. I'm going to leave that. So, the closer you get, the more of a splatter type of a spray. Let's do that down here. If I go real close, it's going to be a spray that sprays and bloops out. Now, I love this. I'm going to leave it and let it dry and see what it looks like when I come back. It's, it's so far, it's coming out exactly the way I want it. So I'm going to let those colors do their thing. And we'll come back and revisit it after it dries. It's hard to wait, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait. And you can use a heat tool to dry dilution sprays. So I am going to go ahead and dry them a bit. They dry really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and use my heat tool just to speed it up a little bit and see what happens. Did one right down here and let it run this way. Just adds more interest. Go close, spray solid. It'll be very liquidy and then let it run and just kind of help it along. And it looks best right over your texture spots. Beautiful. Okay, so all of that background is still wet and drying, but I still want to play, so I'm going to just be careful not to lean in it, and I want to um, bring out the body of the dragonfly a little bit. It is, it's too washed out for me. I want it to be a little darker and get some blacks in here. Um, I always, with my art, and this is just something that I do, is I always choose which side I like color-wise better, which for this particular piece it's turning out to be this size so on the opposite side I like to do some black highlighting so underneath the wings it would be underneath things alongside this body I still need to fix this little crack here where I split my piece of material I want his body to pop so I'm going to do black in those places I'm using um, golden fluid acrylic and I'm using it in a fine liner bottle these bottles are just really fun because they have a, a little pin that goes into the tip and it's got this metal tip and so you can actually come in here and doodle with this or draw with it but for me I can go right along this edge here with my black paint and just put some black shadow in there come under this wing And it's going to just lay down a little row of paint for me right where I want it. And I kind of like how it goes right up to that material. And you can take a brush if you want to. And you can work it a little bit with your brush. I don't know that I want to do too much. So it is just acrylic paint, it's fluid, so it is good for doing things like this for writer, for doing writing, and okay, and I'm going to bring that black across his tail and up the body. I'm going to put some over here along the edge of this body and drag it across with a little damp brush just to bring this body a little bit back into focus. It's To me it's just too set back so just my preference. Yeah, see I really like that. It's casting a nice little shadow and it's making that body stand a little out a little bit more hope you can see that and then under the wing too I do like that 
under the wing it looks really nice so I'm gonna do a little bit more of that underneath each one of these wings and see how I can just do a fine line and drag it right along and then just brush it a bit it even looks nice to do a little bit of pulling that black down into my texture see that and I'm going to do that on this one as well right along the edge of that wing just take my liner and just draw with it and I'm just casting a shadow my finger to blend stuff a lot too. Okay. So see how now that black underneath each one of those wings on that side has just made that stand out and stand a little bit forward. So and along this side of the body. I like it. Okay now all those places that I put texture paste are now covered with the color of the sprays that I used and I like to kind of bring a little bit of the white back just for some contrast so I'm gonna go ahead and use some sandpaper and just in a few places sand a little bit of that texture paint I'm gonna use a sanding block and just in a few spots let me zoom in in a few spots I'm just going to I don't want it all sanded I don't want it all white but if you just kind of lightly go over those spots look at the beautiful result isn't that pretty so it looked like this and now I'm gonna sand that just lightly if you're too heavy-handed you're gonna end up with it being totally white again and I don't want that I just want it to bring down just a couple of little spots and bring in some interest see so I'm going to go up here and do some of these as well and just a little bit here and there let's see what it looks like see that's very yellow and I want a little bit of it to be white So now you have yellow and white and green underneath. And it just adds some adds some interest. Okay, now I'm going to use my Tim Holtz foam stamps. And it's an alphabet set. Looks like this. And I'm going to use paint and I'm going to stamp the word transformation or transform. I'm not sure which. I'm going to put a cross the body of the dragonfly right on the material. Okay, I am using just a plain white acrylic paint and I'm using my glass mat here. And I'm just gonna put down some paint and then spread it out evenly. And then you wanna pick up the paint And when, make sure when you stamp it that you like how it looks. I always test it out on glass first. Okay. Make sure your image goes on nice and flat. And then I'm going to just stamp those letters.
Okay, I love my words. Transform. See how the crackle just ended up looking like marble because the cracks in it um, took the sprays and then just has like a marbling effect. I like the... Okay, kind of an interesting thing to use. Um, I use Tim Holtz Distress Inks a lot to um, add some distress and interest to the pages, but the other thing I like is shoe polish. I am using black shoe polish and a soft stencil brush, and where I have put that paint underneath the wings, I'm going in with some shoe polish and I'm dabbing it on there and going into like a little swirl effect getting down into the crevices of that texture the effect is just so beautiful i love it look at that soft black look what it did on the texture it shattered it out it's just different i, I can't describe why it's different than tim holtz but it is it's soft and it's after you brush it on it dries like super quick but the result that it makes and I'm going right into that material because the material is porous and I'm just swirling this in a circle underneath that wing those wings and look at the shadow that it makes gorgeous 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 you can do that around the edges of your paper black shoe polish is a great mixed media product believe it or not And when it dries, you can touch it. You don't get it on your hand. It just stays put. It's wonderful. If you have something that you're wanting to antique around, um, use a brown shoe polish and you can do the same thing and it makes it look totally antiqued. Now I'm going back to my Derwent Graphic paint pens. I'm using a green. And I'm just going to come in here and do some random doodling there they have a nice fine japanese tip you don't have to press at all but you can come in here and add some doodling so look at that i'm just going to randomly draw some like i'm doing like sketchy rectangles just to add some more interest to that background. So I'm gonna do that randomly all over my design. Okay, I did my rectangles in green and I did them strategically around the page. You wanna do things that are gonna carry your eye all over your artwork. So I put them in places where it's gonna make you look everywhere. And I was going to go around the edge with black and I've changed my mind. I really like how it looks so I was going to do my splatters in white and I think I'm going to do my splatters in black instead of bordering in black. So I'll be right back and we'll do some splatters. Okay, on a different video I showed five different ways to make splatters and they come out all different uh, result and so I'm choosing to use my um, silicone basting brush. I'm doing using my fluid acrylic paint and I really want my splatters to be relatively big so that's why I'm going with my acrylic basting brush it makes a bigger more kind of wild splatter I also forgot to mention you can use a fan brush but for me I don't know it's just fan brushes work but it's very fine and I have some other ways in my video that I like to do fine perfect let me move this over here yep that's what it needed instead of bordering it I went with splattering it instead it needs just a touch up here at the very tip top coming onto the page and there we go oh in person this looks just so fun let me show you up close 
So here's all our textures, our colors, our background, our material. Our focal is from a t-shirt. We've got textures and crackles and splatters, all kinds of interest. And then the word transform. So the word transform, as a noun, it is the product of a transformation. As a verb, it is to make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of something. So dragonflies are known to go along with the word transform because they are, um, they represent that. They trans, they're transformative into things that you want to grow into, things that you want to accomplish. So I thought that was a perfect word to go over my dragonfly. I love that it is t-shirt material, but you would never ever know that. If somebody looks at this, they can touch and feel all this beautiful texture, but they have no idea that that came off of a t-shirt. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had fun and it makes you go look for a really fun t-shirt to transform into a beautiful piece of art in your art journal. If you have any questions, leave them in the um, comments below and I'm always happy to help. I, I do list the products below that I used in this video uh, with links where you can purchase them if you're interested, if you don't happen to have those products. Um, so if you have any questions about the products, how I used them, or about how I created this art, please let me know and go make some art today in your art journal transform one of your t-shirts and remember art soothes the heart so thanks for stopping by this was a lot of fun